Justice for All. Okay, uh, I'd like to begin with the Vice Chair reading the public uh, input statement. The first public input session is a 15 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. The second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents. The board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions cannot be made during public input, for example, matters involving personnel. Is there any public input? <coughs> All right. In that case, we will move on to um, item number four. We have two sets of minutes to approve uh, from December 19th. Does anyone have any questions about those? That was too long ago for me to remember. <laughs> I read them. It looked interesting. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why they were I delayed from last time. But because we didn't, we didn't have a quorum. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> great. Becky? Any uh, questions, comments, I really or found the, the minute reader? Yeah, I'm still looking for it. <laughs> We're failing that emotion to uh, um, approve. I motion to accept both minutes? Or we'll we'll just do the just one, one at a time. Just do the 19th. One from yeah. January, uh, December, December 19th. December 19th. Yeah. All right, uh, I, I second. can't find my agenda. I'll second. And so just to double check, you both were present at the 19th, yes. right? Yep, okay. All right, uh, all those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. <coughs> and what else do we have? And the next one. An abstain and an abstain. Well, I wasn't at the last meeting, but that was on the 19th. You were on the 19th? Yeah. Yeah. So you're able to vote on the 19th. Yeah. So 701. <coughs> Thank you. All right, uh, now we have the minutes for January 2nd. Any comments, questions, discussion? <coughs> um, there was one link in the policies that didn't go to the right place. Okay. And I can't find the agenda right now. But so. I think we skipped and we tabled the policies. Yeah, we tabled yeah. them. No, oh, okay. We didn't do policies. Okay, so. that's on the agenda today. Yeah. For tonight. Yeah. Okay, sorry. No, I still haven't so. found it. All right. What's it called? Do I hear any motions to approve? I'll motion to approve. All right, second. I'll second. All that in was favor. Becky. Fourteen. <laughs> All in favor? One, two, three, four. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. <laughs> Oh, here we go again. <laughs> it was a small meeting. Right, so we'll have to. Well, this <laughs> you're saying you weren't. This says you were there for the January, the January second. second one. Oh, January. I was. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yay. So five. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. Then, abstain. Uh, uh, you're an abstain. There it is. And Rebecca's an abstain, and Lynn is an abstain. And that's where we'll that down. Okay. <laughs> All right, Apparently. so let me just make sure I get my notes straight. But Travis was here. Rita. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know. Lynn. And Rebecca. Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. <coughs> okay, moving on to number five, extending student lunchtime. Presentation by Kelton Smith. Okay, so we have a young man, Kelton, uh, from the high school who is uh, well prepared tonight. We'll move aboard so that we can see him just a stack here for him. And then um, we have, uh, what he's provided me with is uh, the students of NHS, faculty and parents of students at NHS. There, it's uh, a listing of people who have signed off on this. It's a pretty long list. Kelton, did you count all these up? <laughs> Let's just say there's a lot. 19,056. I mean, 1,956. 1,956. <laughs> I was going to say. It's a little padded. You, you were. <laughs> and then I have a 
uh, the, the feedback from people about it as well so we'll have that information to share with the board and with the high school administration um, so that they can uh, consider the information as well thank you very much so my name is Kelton Smith uh, I'm a student at uh, NHS I'm a junior uh, I live in Berwick and uh, about a month ago uh, I was talking with a few friends uh, that they were saying that lunch was too short and so we decided to put together a petition and that's how this whole uh, ball got rolling uh, so my presentation is on why we should have longer lunches at NHS so first what it is now uh, as of right now students have 20 minutes uh, from the time that lunch starts to the time the lunch period ends uh, five of that uh, five of that at the end of the period um, uh, at the end of the f sorry I'm a little nervous <laughs> <laughs> we're kind don't worry okay. so Kelton what's your favorite sport uh, football <laughs> football all right uh, so, so um, at the closing five minutes of each lunch they actually close the gate so that kids aren't allowed to get food after that uh, and so this and so the 20 minutes can uh, consists of from the time that kids leave the classroom when the bell rings uh, when they get down to the lunchroom they walk down to the lunchroom they wait in line and they uh, get their food and sit down and eat and so all that has to be done in 20 minutes and uh, this is the diagram of what the lunch schedule is now so there's 20 minutes for lunch a uh, then there's a 25 minute prep time in between and then 20 minutes for lunch B and then uh, 20 minutes and then another 20 minute uh, prep time in between that and then lunch C is 20 minutes yes uh, for the lunch ladies uh, so oh, okay. yeah. uh, and, uh, yes I have a question too is the does that 20 minutes also include like when the bell rings they have to be in their next class uh, so so when the bell rings from their dismissing class so when they go to lunch that marks the time of when it starts and then uh, when the next bell rings for that to end they have five minutes to get to their next class Kel, just a quick thing uh, yes. for us to help us out later mm -hmm. when you get a chance I'm going to ask you to send your PowerPoint to Mrs. Austin so she can put it in the minutes okay great thank you we'll do. Uh, so um, there have been a few studies conducted at Noble High School. Uh, the first one was there was an anonymous poll conducted among the uh, some teachers and uh, faculty of NHS. Uh, the teachers, out of the teachers that answered the poll, 87 and a half percent answered that they wanted more time for lunch for themselves and for the students. Uh, there was a petition started last month, and as of uh, three days ago the number was uh, 1956 people this included students parents uh, past students and people in the district and then um, uh, for a week a student at NHS uh, timed the amount of time that they actually had to eat they uh, walked to the lunchroom they got in line waited and then they timed from when they sat down to when the to when the bell rang and that was about over the whole course of the week the average was about eight and a half minutes of table time any questions so uh, some studies conducted outside of Noble High School uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics uh, Pediatrics recommends that a student gets at least 20 minutes to actually sit down and eat um, which uh, 20 minutes is a lot more than seven and a half um, um, and that is excluding the time uh, waiting in the line or walking from the classroom to the cafeteria. Uh, another study that was conducted by the journal, the Journal of the of the Academy of uh, Nutrition and uh, d uh, Diet d Dietetics, <laughs> Dietetics also did a study. Um, the study shows that the average high school student that has t uh, that has a 20 minute lunch period eats 30, 35% less food uh, than a kid that has a 25 minute lunch period. Uh, the benefits of having uh, longer lunches students would not be wasting as much food if they did not eat in uh, they would not be wasting as much food that they don't eat if they had a longer time to eat it. Uh, students would have more time to socialize outside of class instead of in the middle of class. Mm -hmm. And uh, students would have more time to digest the food that they just ate before getting right back to work. 
Uh, did you have a question? I thought I saw your hand raise. No, okay, sorry. Uh, so what I am proposing, I'm proposing that uh, if you cut the uh, prep time that was ranging from 20 to 25 minutes to 15 minutes in between lunches, that would allow each of the lunch periods to be extended to 25 minutes without making adjustments to the block schedule or class time. And here's a diagram. So there would be 25 minutes for lunch A, 15 minutes for the prep time for the lunch ladies, uh, 25 minutes for lunch B, another 15 minute prep time, and then 25 minutes for lunch C. And that would all be, um, that would not make any changes to the block schedule. Yes. So when you did your survey of yes. staff members and teacher staff, did you also discuss this cutting the prep time with the people that work in the cafeteria, the lunch ladies? Uh, no, I did not. Uh, so here are the side-by-side -side diagrams uh, that I just put together. And then uh, thank you for your time and consideration. Any questions? First Can of you, all... Oh, I'm oh. sorry. We keep doing that. Pardon? Can you go back one screen? Yes. So... Okay, so this doesn't change... This doesn't have any impact right. on any class length of time or the actual start it's like the start and finish of blocks might have to adjust a little but they wouldn't be shortened in time uh no the well the start and end of the lunch blocks would have to change yes but the uh, academic time would stay the same mm -hmm. okay. uh, um, how does that happen if you're taking if you're putting five more minutes in because lunch the whole, the whole thing still happens. Take so take away from the prep time. Yeah. It's 11.15 to 1. The whole window still takes right. the same amount it's of time. Still the same yeah. So you adjust but, times. But each individual kid is taking five minutes from someplace before or after lunch, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. So first off, I'm impressed with your initiative. Um, I think that, that uh, the topic that you've picked is a a topic that rankles kids in a lot of different high schools and yes. middle schools. It's not a, it's not an unusual topic. Um, I, I appreciate the organization of the materials that you provided. I'm going to contact the high school administration, share this information. Uh, we'll have the PowerPoint information as well. Yes. And I think uh, also Mrs. Uh, Ms. Abby Pelletier, who is in charge of food service. Uh, the director here and Kim from uh, who's the uh, manager of our kitchen we'll talk with both of them to see what does that mean to them which is right. the question that you're looking at <clears throat> and also try to think about um, because before I saw your presentation that what was going through my mind was how's this going to play in with SRTC or how's it going to play in with, with with bus times and schedules coming and going so I think you've presented something interesting here, um, which you've gone about it in a creative way to try to offer a productive solution. I don't know myself if it is or not, but I think uh, you're starting an a good discussion, um, and I applaud your efforts for that. Whether change comes about, change doesn't come about, I'm not going to pro project how that's going to work. But I think that uh, your 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 idea has merit. Okay, thank you. I wonder if when you talk to them, if there's a way to get a little more prep time before the whole thing starts. And that would somehow I know the prep from time the, um, means getting ready for the next block, but from the, in the cafeteria mm -hmm. getting prep time ahead yeah, of know. the curve. I know that they're in pretty early. I'm not sure what their change over time is from the close of the breakfast to the start of the lunch setup i think it's i think it's pretty seamless they don't have a like a much of a break time built in for the group let's say in between but there's one way to find out let's have some conversations mm -hmm. and uh we'll we'll keep you apprised of what the information is so that you have it on hand as well okay thank Sound you like a deal any other questions Thank and you. Nice and I you. thought I saw a hand over there too, and I realized <laughs> what it was was your father going, That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You said they, they closed the gates yes. five minutes before the end of the period, so that actually gives them an extra five minutes on that. Mm -hmm. It does, yes. Yeah. Well, except that's already built into 
what they're doing. Right, that's what they're doing now. So yes. that's right. right. So it's not so, a, it's not an extra five minutes. It's just five minutes as a part of what they're already needing. Okay, so that would allow them to do some behind the scenes stuff and then wash the tables after the kids are gone. Do they do that between lunches? I think that they wipe the tables. I don't think that they necessarily wash them. Okay. I'm also wondering about student service. Like what students are allowed to assist with, such as possibly wiping down tables or mm -hmm. sweeping up. And I, I'm, I don't think that's a contractual issue because we're not taking time from people that are still working the same amount of time. Right. I think there's optional things we can look into. Yes. Could that be counted as community service? Would. Ah. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, do you want me to just leave Just unplug, I think, and because we'll be having another presentation. And what about the connection? Do we? We'll, we'll figure that piece out when we get there. <laughs> Which happens to be very soon. Yeah. So, can you send that to me? Do you yes. Know that? Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, we don't have students, don't have students here tonight. So we will pass on the. Do we need to vote on passing? No. no. Okay. No. All right. So on to the audit report with Amy Chassie. 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 Yes. So Amy, uh, where did you come from today? Portland or Standish? Uh, South Portland. South Portland. Oh, okay. It was off a little bit. Off a little bit. She was at the office. I was at the office. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, yeah. It's tax time. You don't need to play. Okay, so I'm Denise Van Campen. I'm the business manager for the district, and I have Amy here. Amy is a partner with the firm Runyon, Kirstein & Willett. Um, they have performed an audit of our fiscal year ending June 30th, 2019, and she's here to give you some of those highlights. I handed out a packet um, of paper that, if you follow along, that is her presentation tonight, and uh, I'll let her go. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank Denise and the central office staff for helping us and assisting us in gathering all of the documents that we need and that we hound her for during a week of the time when we come in and do field work. Not only to speak, we come in in early July to do interim audit procedures as part of our audit and her staff is very helpful as well as Denise is very helping, very helpful in getting us the documents that we need so that we can perform this audit in an efficient and timely manner. In front of you, uh, Denise mentioned to me that she had passed out, was it a, a week or so ago, the audit uh, packet. Uh, so I hope you guys have had a chance to review that. In the annual financial report, there are a few pages in the beginning. I don't have the page numbers. Well, pages four through eight is what we call the management's discussion and analysis. I would strongly urge that you read the management's discussion and analysis. That was prepared by Denise and reviewed by management. And it's a useful tool to use in reading your financial statements and understanding the financial highlights of the fiscal year 19 audit. So it's more black and white than a lot of the financial statement disclosures that you'll find in the financial, in the financial report. One of the things I do want to congratulate the district on this year is no journal entries, no audit journal entries. So that's very good. That just simply means that the reports that you see on a monthly basis every time that you get that you guys meet. Um, are really accurate because we're not coming in and having to do a bunch of audit adjustments. So you're getting your your numbers that you're reviewing um, each board meeting that you have um, are usually very good. To go over the summary of the audit results, so once again the district received an unmodified opinion in simple terms that means a clean opinion your financial statements were fairly stated in accordance with generally accepted um, accounting principles or gap in addition to the financial statement audit we conduct two uh, compliance audits one of those compliance 
compliance audits is required by the Government Auditing Standards Board and it's known as your Yellow Book Audit. Well, we're coming in and testing the financial processes or the internal control financial processes of the district. The second audit, the second compliance audit, is an audit required by the uniform guidance. And that audit is required because the district expends more than 750000 in federal funds. And that audit is grant specific. And in fiscal year 19, we were required to test the special education cluster. And again, I'm happy to report that audit had no findings, so that audit came back clean. In addition, as part of our audit, we test internal control processes. We tested the cash disbursements process. We tested your payroll processes. We look at revenues substantively, and that's because the majority of your revenues are uh, grant monies, your state subsidy, and your local assessments. We can tie your local assessments to what is approved within the budget, and we can look at the federal funds and uh, the, f the state subsidy money from the federal funds comes from the P100 and your state your state subsidy we can get off the, um, uh, the main DOE website. So we're able to look at your revenues substantively instead of doing full-blown internal control testing. We also test the controls at the various schools with it for their student activity funds. This year we have some management letter comments nothing significant but their recommendations to be brought upon to the people in charge of such activity funds. Um, primarily the, all the comments that we wrote up deal with the cash disbursements process and I'll go over each of those, com uh, those comments um, at the end of this presentation. And along the way if there are any questions feel free to interrupt. If I can't answer I will direct to Denise if they're um, I'm giving a general overview so if they're very specific I will have to defer to Denise. Uh, page three of the presentation is uh, goes over the fund balance and again I'm focusing on the general fund that is your largest fund the school has many other different funds um, but tonight's presentation is focusing on the general fund so your total fund balance decreased by 180,000 this year over last year um, simply your expenses um, exceeded revenues by $180,000 uh, but you still do have a healthy fund balance I this around two million dollars a little bit more and there's additional information on what your fund balance is in the bound copy of the annual financial report the next page discusses the revenues and compares your budget to actual revenues um, $56,000, approximately $56,000 uh, more in state subsidy was received um, than what originally was budgeted because of changes in the ED279 formula calculation. In addition, 30 in charges for services you received an addition or you received $36,520 more because you had that just was more than what was expected and what you had budgeted for. You, uh, your in interest earned exceeded budget by 58000 Again, more in investment earnings than what was budgeted. And then your other revenues were uh, under budget because 103000 of that were a result of changes in the share the cost of the shared staff with RSU 35 and I did not put this on here but there's also one hundred thirty thousand eight hundred dollars that is budgeted in the general fund for the MLTI uh, program the revenue is budgeted here but the expenses are in its own special grant fund because that is required by the state so we the expenses are reported in a special revenue fund but the revenues are budgeted in your general fund so that makes up the difference as well the next page re we review your general fund expenditures 
all categories came in under budget after the allowable 5% budget transfer and basically the funds that did have budget transfers was uh, $8,300 was transferred from your regular instruction line to the special education line. That's why your special education budget to actual equals and that's just a result of a 5% uh, 5 budget transfer. Other savings in fiscal 19 included reduced benefit costs from staff turnover. Um, that was approximately 421,000. Lower than expected custodial supplies of about 58,000. And another savings in staff turnover of 271,000. So that's a result of the savings in your, your expense categories being under budget. The next graph is just a revenue distribution and it shows what percentage of your revenues come from your local assessments and what comes from what we call intergovernmental. Your intergovernmental is simply your state subsidy. And as you can see that remains fairly consistent from year to year. Page 7 and 8 are two pie charts that compare your 2019 expenditures and your 2018 expenditures and as clearly seen on these two graphs regular ed and special ed are your two major um, greatest expenditure areas and again these percentages are very comparable to the prior year there are no unusual fluctuations noted and then the final, the final page um, just goes over, reviews your other fund balances for your other, your different funds, adult ed, school grants, school lunch, um, Huzzy Theater, and the International Student Program. Again, all of these fund balances are fairly comparable to the prior years, and there were minimal transfers from the general fund to these, these funds. Um, in 2019. Sometimes you, at other districts you will often see um, the general fund transferring quite a bit of money into the school nutrition fund. Um, that was not the case here. So that's the end of this presentation. The final thing is I just want to go over the management letter comments. Oh, sure. Okay, the school lunch fund, does that include the donations that we receive from residents? It's, I believe it does. It's part of the... Yes, yeah, so what we... Um, what happens when we get donations, uh, they go to the school nutrition office and they get put in one account to be used as they are as they are needed. Mm -hmm. So they are they are sitting there as a deferred revenue is where it ends up in a in a line. But okay, it's basically so it's sitting in a, in an account waiting to be used. Okay. So the next and final thing that I want to go over is it's going to be in one of your bound reports. It's called the reports required by government auditing standards and the uniform guidance. I just want to review the management letter comments, um, which begin on page nine. So the first comment or the first recommendation is when we were testing the internal control dis or the cash disbursements at Noble High, we <coughs> noted um, there were two specifically two itemized receipts that were submitted for reimbursement. But after looking at the actual itemized receipt, we noted a couple items on the receipt that were probably not reimbursable items but as such, the, they were reimbursed. So we're just recommend, recommending that when someone submits an invoice for reimbursement, that the person in charge review the itemized receipt to ensure that all the items that are on that itemized receipt are reimbursable items. So that's what we noted at the high school. At the middle school, 
during our cash disbursement process, we noted one item selected for testing that did not contain an invoice to support the reimbursement request. So a reimbursement request was made, the check was cut, but there was no invoice supporting that reimbursement. Again, it was one item out of the 40 that we test, but we still want to bring it to your attention. And finally, at the HESI school, again, within the cash disbursements process, we noted four instances where the disbursement did not contain a request for payment form. Now, in the procedures that the HESI school follows, it is not required that a request for payment form be submitted. These invoices had the proper sign-off, approval, everything was noted there, but it did not have a request for payment form. But out of all the other ones that we tested at that same school, they did have the request for payment form. So we're just asking that consistency be brought upon the procedures that are being followed and maybe the policy get, or the procedures get revised to say all disbursements get a request for payment form. From our standpoint, it's, it makes it a lot easier if there is a request for payment form, it's filled out properly, all the proper signatures, approvals are listed on that form and then the backup supporting that request is attached. And it's not, essentially, they were following their procedures, we just would like to see more consistency. And then the last comment is just a couple pronouncements that are going to be coming up that do affect how the financial statements are going to be reported. Um, we have discussed with Denise, one of them is regarding the fiduciary activities. That's going to take effect this fiscal year. But Denise and I have been having ongoing conversations how this will affect the financial statements and it is going to be just a presentation uh, change. The next GASB is GASB 87 which revolves around leases but at, that only takes effect in 2021 and as we get more uh, training on that, get more knowledge about that, we will then be in touch with uh, Denise to see how that's going to affect the reporting of the financial statements. And aside from that, that's all I have. Any questions? <coughs> questions? Um, I'm not sure if it was last year or the year before, but I sort of remember that the only comments that we had before were kind of similar. And that's, um, that's at every district, okay. honestly. So, when it well, what I didn't know is at, when you do your audits, do yeah. you look at, okay, so these may have been issues, but it was an improvement over last year, or, or do you only look at it sort of in this year on its own? No. So, for instance, these comments that we have at these schools next year are going to we're going to be testing those schools once again to see if we're still having the same issues or if they've made improvements. Um, some schools do make improvements, but honestly, it's this is consistent with other districts. Student activity funds are one of the hardest mm. areas to get complete consistency where all procedures are being followed. And it's, this is a large district and there's a lot of transactions that are going through those activity funds. So overall, I mean, some of these these comments are really minor. Okay. To, in, in the amount of transactions that happen at all of these schools, especially the high school, um, it's not a very material comment. But it's still something that was brought upon our attention once we did the test that we wanted to share with you guys. But we we test all the schools each and every year. Okay. In, in the previous years as well as this year, as soon as we have any findings, Denise, we, we talk about, and with Amy as well, about corrective action plans. Yep. Okay. I guess the only comment I would make is, I think if you look back, even though the schools were similar in prior years, the actual issue or the actual comment is a different reason. So this year, for example, the high school was a, a non-reimbursable item, where in a prior year maybe cash receipts ca or receipt no receipts or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So every time, what happens is um, after we have our audit, and I see the comments from Amy down below, you'll see our response in that document, and I 
I work with the with the people in the schools to kind of make improvements or like she said update an internal control so that we are presenting it in a in a better format all right well thank you thank you and finally thank you Steve I know you're retiring and it was a pleasure to work with you <laughs> thanks very much I appreciate that um, you'll be missed <clears throat> RKO does a great job for us, very collaborative relationship. It's been, I think the whole time I've been here, you've been at RKO, RKO and come and done our work. So yep. it really helps to have consistency, that's been great. And then the other thing is, this stuff doesn't happen without the way that Denise uh, works that's with the correct. people in the district who the are in charge of all these pieces to make sure it all works properly. So. We appreciate you paying attention to the minute details and we appreciate the fact that Denise has that 50,000 foot and then the, fir the first foot level of this. So thanks very much. Thank you. And honestly, the staff yeah. couldn't do it without the Absolutely. staff. We have a yeah. fabulous Absolutely. central office staff. Really yeah. okay. We have some very dedicated people who understand the processes that, that are in place. Thank you very much. Thank and, you. and speaking of details, um, I'm this going is to, for Denise. Yeah. Yes. We're going to uh, <coughs> transpose two items. Yeah, just very quickly. Uh, you're right here, and there's a thing called financial summary, which we present every, once a month. So my question to the board is: Do you have any questions about the financial summary at this point? I'm. I'm good. That was hard work. Yeah. Good job. Just okay. wanted to make sure. You know, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Great. Well, thank, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. All right, then we're going to hop back again to number eight, oh. and we're going to have a presentation from Jennifer England on the Multiple Pathways Program and update. Yes. Yeah, so Jen has been working in the district for a number of years. Uh, former English teacher, Jen, yes, at the high school. Not former, but you know. Uh, and then um, she's very passionate about trying. She was, at the time, she was very passionate about figuring out who needs help, how can we reach out to students, and really seeing that um, we were hitting some niches, but we weren't hitting some others. So. Um, it, it, she was largely the person that was the brainchild of the Multiple Pathways program. Uh, very good support from the high school administration, really good support from Sue and from other people to say this is exactly the kind of thing we need to be doing because it's talking about kids who are completely able to graduate and to take their next step if they have some slightly different supports potentially from their peers for some reason or another there's generally an off-track situation that occurs so um, one of the most intriguing things that I find about multiple pathways is and you'd really have to stop in to see what I'm talking about it's a family environment it's really different uh, and it's different to the extent that when the grant was submitted to the Barr family, not the Barr, not the building assets reducing risks, although that's a nice title to go with this, but a separate but from Boston, the Barr family, for $750,000 over a three year period, um, they were very interested in seeing this do a couple of things. One, move more to scale to match the population of the school. Two, provide specific leadership roles in that and three um, bring uh, ask people to do the hardest part to me which was what aren't you thinking of that this program needs how do you know you're meeting all the student needs so I think that um, uh, I appreciate the board's support for MP over the last two years particularly as some of the pieces that came into the grant have come off the grant this will be the last year of that loop I believe Jen so um, we'll we'll be at a place where we're sustaining multiple pathways without the assistance of the bar family and I think that the pieces that are in place are going to lead to really 
further successes for our students. So, um, Jen, thanks for coming tonight. Thank you very much. This is this is my opportunity to oh. say, let's have a celebration opportunity. How about we ask Jen to come in? Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So hey, this Jen, is, before thank you. I, yes, please. Can you share that with me too when you have one hundred percent? Thank you. So here's a picture of um, the group this year at Christmas. We're missing a few, but that's most of us. And um, the program started seven years ago. And basically, the principal came and said, "I'm not satisfied with our alternative ed program. Kids are dropping out. There's violence. They're not happy. We got to do this differently. Do you want to come back to Alt?" And I was like, "Yes, please." But I have some big requests. I want to ask that kids choose it. That they actually have to apply. They have to interview, and they have to go to summer school. They have to earn a credit so that they really want to be a part of this community and everybody thought I was nuts and I said can I please also have two vans so we can get out of this building and do things in the community please and I said can you please give me permission for the foundation to be the concept of community and the power of community and they said yes and the school has been so incredibly supportive and what I love about it is there's no one type of kid who applies yes we have what you would think of with your traditional alt kids um, we have a lot of kids year one I was blown away by how many artists and musicians and dancers apply and we learned some big lessons with that. Kids on the spectrum seem to really flourish with us, so that makes us a really cool, different environment. We're very safe, so we have a lot of kids who identify as trans. We have a lot of kids um, who are really struggling with poverty and everything that can go with it, but um, together we make up this thing called MP. So part of the grant required us to spend one year with design and a year of implementation. We're in year two. We have one more year with about $150,000. And the grants um, has really connected to us. I just spent Wednesday evening um, with Spring Point and some bar folks. And they're excited about continuing the relationship and the possibilities, so that's really good. But one of the things we worked the hardest on was our core values and beliefs. What we really want to focus on, the tenets that will let us do the work that we're committed to doing and doing it well. And every time I'm asked to go and speak, um, it's the community part that people want to hear more about and have the most questions about. And I sincerely believe that that's the foundation that allows kids to really become their best selves with us. And we're looking at the emotional, social, and academic best self of all of these kids. And the biggest piece is, again, community and gratitude. We circle up every morning for about 10 minutes, and we focus on um, positive youth development theory, which really focuses on choosing positivity, choosing gratitude, and some mindfulness activities. And we use the term best self constantly. And we really work to get to know kids on a level where we can have a sense of what might allow them to really start discovering their bliss and their passions and what's really going to um, bring some true happiness in their lives. So the Bar Family Foundation, um, year three basically is what we're at, and what we need to focus on this year is the ongoing design implementation and fo focusing on the instructional vision and coaching. Um, they've really pushed me. I really believe in collective leadership. I really believe in a team, and they've pushed me hard to really grow as a leader and a coach, and that's been uncomfortable, but it's been incredible. And we have some new teachers that just, MP is a big ask, and they are blowing me away. It's really exciting, the caliber of teachers that are choosing um, to work here. Really strong push um, from the grant to work on post-secondary college and career curriculum, so that's been transformative. Um, uh, a new great eight advisory um, years ago when I was asked to, we did a big study, who's dropping out? And we found that freshmen who failed three more classes dropped out sophomore, junior year. And I was teaching seniors and AP Lit, but I was intrigued and I was like, yeah, give me freshmen. And after a year of freshmen, I was like, could I please um, teach an elective um, that doesn't feel like school? Oh, my apologies, sorry. Could I please teach an elective that doesn't feel like school, first block of the day, so I can work with these ninth graders that just lack the basic study skills. They don't know how to transition to high school, and they need a base. They need a community. And Mr. Finley said, go for it. And it was amazing. And I wanted to continue that. So in MP, we still do a ninth grade advisory. Next year, we'll actually have a ninth grade team and so we're going to start doing an eighth grade advisory and it was really interesting Mr. Roberts came to visit um, with many of his teachers and guidance counselors last week to think about doing something similar in his building so I love that it's going to kind of continue which is really nice um, we are working on our grade nine um, competencies because we're going to be serving grade nine next year and this is a big one so first year of the design year when we're doing all this research one of the biggest impediments for many of our kids living in poverty is transportation they can't get a job they can't take a college class they 
kind of get stuck. This rural poverty was very new to the grant with their first school in Maine and with their first school that isn't urban. When they sent me all over the country to look at schools, it was New York City, it was Chicago, it was Denver. They are intrigued by Maine and intrigued by rural poverty and it really is its own thing. So year one we said can we please have a new elective that's driver's ed that happens in the building and we were able to do it for 10 kids. Um, Mr. Moore is going to do it again this year but then the money's going to run out so we have got to figure out a way to do this because it's changing lives for these kids to have their opportunity to have their license in high school. The doors are open, the possibilities are open. It, it really is kind of um, breaking the cycle of poverty. And there's our rigor cogent work which the bar was super impressed with. They make us go and present to schools all the time. And what we do is every Monday we have a group of students who sit with one teacher and myself and they give the teacher feedback on the week's lessons, the level of rigor, the level of relevance, um, where they see room for improvement, where they're bored, and the teacher really is just there to receive feedback from the students and I take all the notes and we feed them a nice lunch and it just feels professional and it gives the kids real choice and input on what's happening regularly, which has really been successful for us. Uh oh, I may need your help. Just be patient. <laughs> I'll try again. There we go. Um, this year, the grant has asked us to do some signature learning experiences, which was a big ask, but incredible. And the first was a unit on mindful meals, which really has changed how we think about food in our program. And we lucked out. Mr. Sutter is a science teacher who came to, my, to us from Ohio. If you actually Google him, there's a credible article in the New York Times about him. And he was a chef in a former life. So the grant does not allow us to spend any money on um, kind of furniture or um, changing the space but we needed a kitchen so they said okay you can have 10 grand for a kitchen so now in the back of the science room we have some incredible um, we have a new stove and fridge and just ways to like do this well and so the kids worked on an incredible meal they learned so many skills and then the grant said would you please come and present to all the other schools that are in the cohort so we went to Boston with these kids and they blew them out of the water and then they said will you come back again so the kids were just with me this week um, so the kids to have this chance for this real authentic kind of performance to a real audience has been incredible and they just keep um, showing what they're capable of it's it's fantastic and we have um, the rigor in college ready this year for the first time at the alumni panel the school asks graduates to come back and speak about the transition to college and for the first time multiple pathways had a student on each end and that was really exciting for us as a program Oliver drew up in the corner um, is going to film school in New York and here's Aiden Roy and Aiden Roy came to us with zero credits as a junior um, he's given me permission to talk about him on the spectrum and just really struggling to figure out this thing called public school and with us he figured it out quick he went to community college studied criminal justice for two years straight A student and I was applying to law school so it's just one of those like yes amazing stories of awesomeness um, over here this is last year's seniors um, we had about 23 so we didn't grab them all and one kid refused to walk when he didn't graduate so here are our awesome kids and of these 10 had a college plan to join the military and everybody else we really worked on at least taking one class you just just put your toes in the water just try it so initially I'll be honest when the grant was pushing so heavy for college I pushed back a little bit that it felt a elitist and maybe a little unreasonable but now I'm all in as long as we do it in a way that really supports kids to not get in debt and feel like failures and understand all the realistic pieces because it's a big change from high school um, last year we had the opportunity because of the grant to take some students to Honduras for a service trip with Sharon Beckwith. It was mind-blowing, so incredible. And um, Anthony Tucker, there was one day where kids could choose an excursion and he's terrified of heights and he said, Ms. England, I don't know why, but I feel like I need to do the zip line. So we did it. So I got to go down a mountain in Honduras with a student um, who came to us um, as a senior, very credit deficient and really on the edge of dropping out and didn't. Um, he actually wrote and released a original album for a senior project, worked with a local studio, just amazing stuff. Um, this year we get to send two kids who have taken Spanish for two years now to Costa Rica with the Spanish teachers, so that's just a big gift too. One of the biggest things we learned with the grant is that partnerships mean everything. Um, my husband and I, the first year, because as I said, so many artists and musicians applied, we started a little nonprofit called Continuum Arts Collective that allows us to provide materials, um, 
materials, classes, mentorships, whatever we can do for kids to really support and enhance their artistic endeavors. And we support an open mic at the high school once a month where kids perform on a little stage. Um, we do our biggest fundraiser is the Revel in the Metal Music Festival. And last year, 20 MP kids came and spent the whole day volunteering, so that was fantastic. We have a gentleman who comes and gives lessons two days a week. This is um, Mr. Dylan Rosa, and he has started his own fashion line where he reconstructs used clothes. And he applied for an expensive computer, and the board said, nope, we don't do technology. And I said, this is an awesome opportunity. Write him again. And this time, give them evidence. Make an argument. So he wrote, he did, he wrote a fantastic piece of writing, and the board said, okay, fine, you got it. So they gave him a really nice computer so they can do the work that he needs to do. Jordan um, was in the musical this year. Um, and we've just learned that partnerships are everything. We've got a connection with a group in Portsmouth that sends 10 of our kids to the TED Talk each year. And I have a group of 100 women in the community who are part of a group where if one of our kids needs something, I put an SOS out and they take care of it. And it's like this parallel process of community serving community. It's just it's awesome. So this year what I'd say we're proud of, of course, is our students, our teachers. This is our social worker who just brought new life into the world. Our relationships, our commitment to mindfulness, this concept of best self, what does it look like and how do you achieve it. Our phone policy, we take them every day and we lock them up and they can't have them. And it was hard at first, but now they're connecting, they're getting together on the weekend, they actually have relationships where they leave their bedroom. It's good. Um, our commitment to rigor, graduation rates, partnerships, sense of community and focus on gratitude, student choice, and positive youth development was a very important lesson from Spring Point and Bar that we continue to focus on in everything we do. And I am so privileged to do this work. Thank you, Mr. Connolly. Yes. Oh, hey. Mm -hmm. it's, this is a pretty easy one. You find people who want to run ahead and you figure out a way to get out of the, their, yeah, their path. Mm -hmm. uh, could you go over your staff up there in the upper right hand corner because you have several new role players this year pleasure. besides Mr. Sutter. <laughs> you hate me, I'm sorry. Yes, sorry. Okay. So um, last year we had an ed tech and his name was Ben Chase and he's the gentleman um, in the light blue shirt behind the woman with beautiful baby and he's phenomenal. He's brilliant. Um, he couldn't decide what to do with his life um, and he met a gentleman named E.J. Gaudet at Portsmouth High School who said you need to go to Noble and check out MP and he spent a day with us and then he painted me a postcard of thank you and then a year later we had an opening for an ed tech and even though he was totally overqualified he's like I'm going to do this. So we altered the grant to create an English position so we could keep him as a teacher. Like this gentleman is brilliant and as good as it gets. Um, he's applying for a fellowship that I know he's going to get this summer. He's just oh, incredible. Uh, next to well, him is Jim. He also had the uh, summer program yes. that he ran yes. with uh, students. He was paying students to do trail work. He received funding to support that. And can you speak to that? Just yes, for a second? with the Great Land Works Trust. He's like, let's get kids. These we don't make our kids do summer school every year, but we got to get them out of the house. They got to be doing something something healthy and many of our kids have never had a job. So with the Great Land Works Trust, um, we got uh, grants um, that allowed Ben to have four kids who worked with him in the summer building and fixing trails and getting paid to do it. It was awesome. Yeah, he's he's as good as it gets. He also he's, leads he's our mindfulness work um, and the bar, the grant was so impressed with him this year they called him an exemplar teacher and he gets additional coaching um, from Spring Point just because they're so excited about him. He's so he meets crazy, with them once a week. Yeah. He's a crazy biker. Yes. Super uh, healthy. Not, not motorcyclist. He's no. A crazy like Rides like the to Rockies from yes. north to south. I said like, mm -hmm. what you mean? Yes. I mean, biking the Rockies to me would be going over some of the gravel in the parking lot. Um, <laughs> School and, vacations, and he goes and volunteers in Puerto Rico. Like he's that kind of person. Yeah. He's wow. just so, really Mr. Special. Chase is so, Mr. is uh, somebody we hope that sticks around, and uh, she's already explained Mr. Sutter. And I just like to say I think Mr. Sutter's a gold mine. He's brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Sutter's a gold mine. Sutter. Sutter's mill? Oh. Never mind. Jeez. <laughs> tough, <laughs> tough group. Tough group. <laughs> Mr. Jim Winslow on the end, he's our PE health teacher and he's such a good guy. He's a football coach, he's a baseball coach, and he's really, he's taking courses towards administration. And I love the fact that a future administration will love all kids. Like, I just love that. Um, and Olivia Moore is in the middle. She's a goddess. She's our history teacher. Very kind. Also certified in all kinds of outdoor ed stuff, so she can take kids on hikes and excursions as well. Miss Samard is our fearless, bold um, guidance counselor who just gets it done for kids. And we created the position of a social worker. Um, 
um, which was really essential. Um, last year we focused on trauma. We were able to go to Baltimore eight times to work with Lisa Frentz at the Institute, um, and that really transformed our work too, being very thoughtful about being trauma informed. Um, our kids' mental, physical, emotional health has really been damaged by their histories, um, but it doesn't mean they can't move forward, and it doesn't mean they can't find that resilience to heal, and again, best self. So thank you. I talked a long time. My apologies. Oh, right certainly now. appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. She mentioned the R word, rigor. That's one of the things that a lot of schools struggle with. And I was going to say in these, these kinds of programs, there isn't another kind of program like this. But in, in alternative settings and so forth, that they struggle with how do we get kids to rigor. We've got them in the doors. We've got them staying in the school. But we can't seem to get them to produce. They build the, re build the relationships. They can see some of the relevance. But they're meeting all three, rigor, uh, uh, relationships, r um, relevance, and rigor, which is absolutely amazing to hit those three points with kids who may be disaffected by school. And the bar grant this week, they don't, they want to figure out all the other programs, all the other schools, if they hit 15% attendance on a single day, they are from rent, that's the highest they can get. And we regularly have perfect attendance. Really wants to understand why our is so good. And I think it's that key part. Mm -hmm. For sure. Heck yes. And the way they continue to, and we can't do A to Z like we can. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> they don't take it all your frustration that just the last guy talked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so at the middle school, we're going to. So at the, at the middle school, <laughs> we're going to continue to uh, reach out to the kids and to Jen and to the staff um, we're just trying to be realistic and continue our momentum um, what to do with seventh and sixth graders um, that need our help at a younger age so we we love what we hear we know the success and we're working on um, taking what we already have uh, for sources and also I'm um, taking a good look at MP and seeing if there's a middle school version of MP junior or MP JV or anything where we can find the five or ten or fifteen students that um, right now are not heading down the road to high school diploma um, and one of the things that, sh um, that we talked about last week was simply that safe warm trust and just feeling good about um, being on campus, maybe not even coming to school, it's a different feel. Um, but we're excited, we're gonna keep doing that, to, so we're gonna keep um, using your students and your staff and you to help um, get us ready for next year and help out some kids, so um, it's it's great, and middle school's gonna try to keep doing our part as well. So, we thank you, Jen. Jen, you, you may know that, you probably do know this, but um, I think one of the great things about this program is, I. I don't know if it's like this in every school, but the general population, does. there's no stigma attached to it. There's, if anything, it's like there might be a little envy. <laughs> um, but I, I think that uh, the, the general attitude is, oh, cool, you know, they're in multiple pathways. Or, I mean, if, like, if nothing else, it's neutral um, or some sort of respect. And I, I somehow don't think that that's the same in all schools. I appreciate it. And I just agree to be your representative for the Alternative well. Education Association. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's a new Alternative Education Association. I agreed to represent your county. And we've only had two meetings. But they're com perplexed by this and yeah. intrigued by this. And one of the main differences for that, I think, is that I pushed hard to be in the building. Most mm -hmm. alts want to be separate. And I want these students to have access to every elective. And our teachers teach an elective to the mainstream. So mainstream kids are in our space. So they mm -hmm. see it. So they judge it with their own eyes, if that makes sense. And a lot of people push back to think I should be outside of the building. And that just wasn't my opinion. I think we're a part of Noble. There are kids who, it's not like if you're, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you have students who can come into your program for a course. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're housed at MP completely throughout the day for every student. It's uh, quite a quite a, yeah. an open doorway. We have a day one block four class to serve mainstream kids, mostly seniors who just need a little extra flexibility and care to make it. And so we serve about 25 mainstream kids in that class as well. 
<laughs> Does that then curiosity or spillover with the mainstream teachers as to how they can take parts of this into their own classrooms? I think so. I think their greatest relationships are with those near us. So the Spanish teachers come in and use our pod and we do celebrations together. Um, Ms. Soon is fantastic. She comes and makes dumplings. We have ping pong championships mm -hmm. with her students. Um, Ms. Davis with the PhD next door. A lot of our kids took, take her electives and she comes to our meetings regularly. People are intrigued by the meditation and the Zen and they came in and they looked but I think they were too scared to really go for it um, but teachers definitely I think especially interns come in a lot to, to look and see what we're doing too mm -hmm. yep. thank, thank you, you. all right uh, moving on to the policy second reading I'm going to start with ADC use and possession of tobacco products and electronic nicotine delivery systems should have the text linked. So you cut most of it off these clips. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, most of this policy was replaced with um, the recommended MSMA that was more updated fresh. This is one of those topics that changes pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. There's some stuff in here that I've never heard of. Yes, yeah. Snuff? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Like, is yes. that a real thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like, type I like the <laughs> part about how it spells out that nobody is allowed to have these mm -hmm. products on campus. Yeah. And, or when representing the school on a field trip, you know, I remember some teachers going off for a smoke and, you know, that's not going to happen with this policy <laughs> and I, I approve. <laughs> Would it be all right to vote on that in the regulation side of things, or the, the um, ADCR together? Yes, it would. All right. So I'd like to propose that we vote on accepting this, if, if that is the will of the board, along with the companion ADC-R. So let's take a look at that as well. That that's the procedure. Be, yeah, and it used to have some parts that were kind of tacked on to the end of the, our previous ADC, so we've disaggregated that. The one thing I noticed that we, we wanted to make sure that the list of um, items were the same in both policies. And, and I thought they were. They're not. Mm. It's NUS. Yeah. SNUS. SNUS. Where are you it's looking? Not in that. It's uh, not in the ADCR. Right. I'm confused about what the difference is. Sarah Spit. Yeah, there is. I have to look it up. Cigar uh, what is it? It's like um, it's like a instead of a. It's almost like a juicy. Yeah. Um, it's, so uh, let's see. So where does that come in? That is. That should be that. Uh, between cigars and spit. How's that? Um, yeah. Yeah. Cigars, snus. Snus. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, oh, I see. They're both in the same document. Okay. Is that ADCR, Joanne? No. Sorry? ADCR. Yes. Yeah, it's missing. Um, the first paragraph. Is snuff, S N U F, different from yes. S N U F? Yes. yes. Snuff is like a powdery. Oh, she's asking snuff, single F, double F. Oh. Is it the same thing? Because snuff with two Fs is listed between chew and herbal. So uh, I should have two I Fs. Think snuff is with two Fs is a like a chew thing, right? It, it's yes. S N U S. That's the one. That's, oh, okay. S. That's, okay. that's the one yeah. that needs to be added. Okay, I heard you wrong. Yeah. There are two different things just by adding another F. No, there's no. no. F. Okay. Snuff. Snuff. Very confused. Snuff. No, it's S N U S. Sounded it though, didn't it? I didn't enunciate very well. <laughs> Funny that was the only thing that we wanted to, um, in that, yeah. make sure the list was exactly the same. Yeah. Nice catch. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions or comments or discussion? Right, can I get a motion to accept these two policies with the amended, <laughs> with the addition of SNOS to, to ADCR? I'll second it. Uh, so Joanne and Becky? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you, Ado. 
Okay. Uh, next up would be JJE, and similarly, uh, we're going to look at JJE and JJE-E, which is the approval form for student fundraising activities. We had a high school form. We didn't have a district form for that one. So we used the high school form to create the district form. We just have a column, a spacing problem. <laughs> under, under, words under number it, and under number five, yeah. Number five, yes. Yeah. 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 And then numbers. under number seven, seven and eight. And thirteen. 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 Yes. And then in B two C. B two C Oh, B religious nature, okay. Two C, yeah. Perfect. Well, that was one up on 13. Yeah, we got that. Yes, get the fundraising. fundraising. Yeah, okay. Okay. And we still have the Steve font issue here. I wanted to make sure. Uh, where are you looking? On the on the E. Uh, JJE dash E on the form. E font. Thank you. Um, Sorry? The uh, cross references. When Jen asked me, I, I added those were right. Yeah. Add those. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do we have any input into what kind of fundraisers they do? Any input? Um, yes. If the board is desirous of it it's not so for the most part that the fundraisers are pretty small so it's not things that we typically bring up at board like if if uh, out in Lebanon for the Ferry Beach Ecology School if they're doing a Yankee Candle fundraiser that's not usually something that I bring up a particular topic about you know sometimes they're, they're pretty low-key but um, I'm, a, I'm fully aware that there have been a couple of major fundraisers several years ago that raised a lot of community conversation. What was about bear? Yeah. What was a bear? It was about what? A bear. A bear? A bear. A bear. Yeah. It was a bear. Yeah. A raffle was for the bear. one that came and spoke before the board about it and almost yeah. got expelled. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just so would like to see another one born here. I would like to see something that's yeah. more, um, that I could buy something from when my grandkids bring it home. I'm not buying the chocolates and the wrapping paper. Um, I would very gladly at, buy seed packets or, um, you know, sustainable kind of things. I think it would be great for you to just return have that to the conversation the, with the like the PTOs yeah. Yeah. and the and the folks that are doing that kind of work because that's yeah. great yeah. feedback just to have ideas of things that people are interested in. Because a lot of people I know just look at those fundraiser packets and they toss them right in the circular yeah, yeah. file because they know there's nothing in there they want mm. or need. Just little input. Right, yeah. right. I think that's good feedback for the folks in Lebanon who are using those particular things. Would that be okay? Yes. Great, thank you. We also have JJER, which isn't on the agenda itself, but it's on this oh. stream of oh, things. Oh, that was a mistake on the agenda? Yeah. JJE dash R. Mm -hmm. My Just apologies. the approval process, I missed it too. And there's one indentation issue with number one. Oh, oh, it's on. It's not on this, but oh, it's that's on that. Interesting. Okay, we'll double check that. Right. Any questions? Debate? Just the cross references again. Do we need any of those that are on um, the um, JJEE? -E? Do we so, need any of those on the J? So JJE-R has yeah. JJE and JJE-E. And then KFB. what's the yeah, other one that I'm? KFB. JJ. That's KFB. KF and KFB. E should have JJE-E. 
It should have JJE and it should have JJE dash R and not JJEE. -E. It shouldn't have itself. JJE, -E, boy, these letters, you know. JJE, JJE dash R. Does it make these as well? Uh, cross references, that's on which one are you that considering? That is on JJEE. -E. And you were asking if, if, they, which if they belong on, on uh, our facilities form. They belong on the R, the review. Let's see. Facilities use fee schedule, community use of school facilities, high school facilities use, fundraising activities, the approval. This is just the process itself that you go through. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that those cross references okay. would, like somebody's going to say, oh, I don't know everything I need to know unless I look to our other policies. So we should remove those. I think we're OK, okay. on JJE-R, not okay. to have those duplicated. OK. But keep them on. Yes. OK. Any further questions? Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to approve this policy. Both policies. Both policies. Both together. Uh, the three, including three. the R. All three. Oh, great. Thank okay. you. I'll second. All in favor? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, thank you. I have one more. I hope. Yes. <laughs> um, JICK bullying. Street at. Was there a section when we were talking about this in the policy committee that you that you kind of yeah to, to pull out the, all the quotation marks? Did you? And we did not pull out the yeah. quotation marks. Thank and you. And I tried to edit it and I couldn't. All right, so I will uh, make sure that that occurs. And then I think there was a no. quotes, quotes, not question marks. Yeah. Right, no, yeah. And um, there was a yeah under B. No, I'm sorry. Under consequences on page three. Yes. Uh, under students. Yes. Mm -hmm. The indentations are should be. In oh, yes. On those two sentences, so three sentences. Mm-hmm. Are you? Do were you just commenting on that spacing? Um. um two, go on page three. This is a long one. This one should yeah. these need to be. Okay, so this to one goes to that. A, B, oh, yeah. C, this yeah, is also not in the right place. Um, which page do you want? Uh, the top of page two. Top of page two. You see how A and B are yes, right here? Yes, thank you. D is, yes, over there. Hmm. And also this first line, just yep. about uh, uh, application of policy. It's Frida, did you also notice there was a font difference yes. in this one? Did he was that picked up? Okay. Uh, wait a minute, in this one or was the other one? It was in the, it was the earlier one. other one okay. that was a copy and paste. Okay. That's a lot of cross, That's cross That's referencing on this one. You want to wow. those are <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you make sure those are all right? <laughs> those, those, those are the ones I just get blurry eyed after about an hour with them. Yeah. Uh, Doing the citations. All right, any questions? Comments? I'll make a motion to accept the policy. A second? I'll second it. All in favor? Nancy just said that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you guys, the committee, for doing these. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it's it is incredible. Uh, so right. we have the first reading. Yeah, so we have EDC, as you can see, use of district vehicles and equipment. We have EHB, and, and all of these are non-required policies, EHB school records retention. If you could see our current <laughs> list of what the records are, it's way out of control. Uh, and then one that is referred to currently, I've got to straighten out the uh, the letters, the lettering for this one, because it's it's really got two sections to it: JJIBC and KLA. I believe it's going to end up being KLA, but but we'll see. The first looks that I've seen in it looks 
like it's KLA. So those are the three policies. There is, uh, after that group, there'll be one more policy that will be recommended to go forward this year out of current um, legislation that's already taken place. So uh, we've got a, one more to look at, but that'll be for a future meeting. Okay, moving on to number 12, employment, new hires, retirement, resignation. Okay, so I have uh, one transition happening. We have um, we have Faye McDonough. Faye is an educational technician too at the Hussey Elementary School. Um, she has uh, sold her home and is going to be transitioning out of the area. So uh, she's been with us since October of 2016. She was uh, very gracious in her letter about the support that. Uh, the central office, Audra Bove, uh, Tina um, Harding have given her over at the Hussey School. So we'll wish her luck. I don't need a motion on that. Okay. Right. Number 13, other. I have two <coughs> brief ones. One, uh, this is not uh, one that I need approval for because it's a, it's a standing trip that the high school has taken advantage of numerous times in the past and, and was one of the most marvel most just marvelous trip that I got to take with uh, Yu Hong Sun and students as well. Uh, this is a China trip for April 2020 and it would be from April 18th to the 28th so I'm notifying you about this because it's an out of slightly out of state. Um, it, uh, we've had the, the Noble Exchange program for 10 years, um, but recently we've seen a decline of exchange students enrolling at Noble High School, uh, only two to three students each year. In 2021, there were three students who have consulted our program up to date, but none have applied. So her plan is to visit three schools and establish a sister school relationship with them, and she intends to invite an administrator and a future, and she's been really working me hard, and I said, look, I really think somebody else needs to step in and, and experience this. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just that was kidding. so subtle. Chinese language students will, will be attending the, pro, the uh, trip as well. The Noble Program will pay for the international and domestic air tickets, travel insurance for Yu Hung and for the administrator, while the students will pay for their international domestic air tickets, travel insurance, passport, and visa. Room and board and short excursions will be covered by the Chinese schools. The goals of the trip are to expand the ex exchange program, uh, provide students with a, a uh, uh, our students with an experience in China, give them the opportunity to practice the language that they've been learning, and to also look into adding short-term three-week exchange programs. One of the difficulties that we have is is an unlevel playing field. Uh, if you have a public-private, if you're an academy, you can have students from um, uh, uh, international students for two years. So if you went to Thornton Academy, for instance, uh, they expanded their dormitories mm -hmm. and things, and, and they have a, a pretty large Chinese population. A public school in the same state can have them for one year, their senior year. I lobbied uh, differently <coughs> on this, but uh, no result. Um, I can't see what the... Uh, yeah, it makes well, no because sense. What, like, so it, what the biggest piece is the uh, where the students would reside for the two-year period. That, um, that a private school, public-private, generally has dormitories mm -hmm. and they have mm -hmm. house people and staff. Whereas when we're doing our exchange programs, we find homes in the right. community for kids. So uh, th there's a feeling that it might not be as secure a situation for students. However, we have had no issues for a decade hmm. with There's securing homes. between one year and two years. You know, you'd, you'd like to think that that shouldn't be the issue, but it is. So um, she's looking for that opportunity. The trip would be to go to Guangzhou, direct flight from Boston, um, to visit local schools, to fly to an area that I'm not even going to take a guess at, the name. Um, 
Hefe? Hefe? That's my guess. That's it. Uh, visiting local local areas there, Chengdu as well, and then flying back on the 28th. So uh, the trip would largely take place during the vacation time. So that's one piece. Um, then we have a donation. So there's a, there's a business that's called Omni Services in Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, that's where their corporate headquarters are, and this is to the Herd Backpack Program. It says, to whom it may concern, at Omni we have a program at the end of the year that allows associates to roll over unused vacation time, donate it to a worthy cause, or roll it into a disability fund. We were so pleased that uh, Mr. Jeff Elwell might be related <coughs> to an it Andrew is, uh, Elwell, it's Andy's, his, it's father. his father. Yeah. Yes. We were so pleased that Jeff Elwell chose to donate his unused vacation time to your organization. It is Jeff's hope that this small gesture will help to you to continue your mission to help young children in need in the, in the Berwick, Maine areas. And the total amount of this is $563.62. Nice. Yeah, very nice. Significant. Yeah, very nice. <coughs> yes. Can I have a motion to accept the donation? I make a motion to accept the donation of uh, 56362 from Omni Service. Very good. I'll second. <laughs> I'll second. All right. All in favor? No one turned it down. <laughs> Linda and Becky, and that's Edo. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other others? I do not. Anyone else uh, have another? I have another just in terms of we had discussed the uh, liaison regarding diversity issues of with, with Christine Dudley. Chris and I have not been able to like connect. She's been away, so we're, or we, she said let's get together after the holidays. So I reached out to her again this week, and hopefully we'll connect with her next Just wanted to let you know. Okay. I have another. Um, I was wondering, in view of the fact that this is snow day number four, has the state made any progress on the blizzard bags? Uh, there are two things that are up in the air for me uh, around that topic. I have heard no conversation around the blizzard bags and also when we meet to form our calendars with the uh, sending schools, even if we have a dissimilar day, we send our students. All the schools agree, send the students. So why those are still counted as dissimilar days when students are present makes no sense to me at all. So if we could straighten out those two pieces uh, for SRTC students um, and schools having a little flexibility that would allow us to start a little earlier or end a little later, whatever, when, and get us out of some of these cycles with the snow days. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, the blizzard bags themselves. Um, the major holdup that I recall from that last, a little later than this time last year, was that there was a requirement that teachers be readily accessible to students on that. Well, I received notifications from the incident management team in York County today about a power outage in Lebanon, power outage in uh, two in Arundel and one, no, one in Arundel, two in Shapley. How, how would those people be available to, <laughs> to students? How does that exactly work? Some school so, must be I, using them, they though, are because I saw, using them. I, I there saw is on a the pilot. There was well, okay. a, uh, well, they said the use your year, whatever they, they call them. Can, they, yeah. Last year, the state said you can do it if you yeah. basically work it up as a pilot Make program, and it's up to the district to, yeah. you know, yeah. basically outline their yeah. own pilot, which but, I believe a year ago we said we were going to do. We the reason I, I asked don't is recall because we were going to, but we might have. Bangor is the biggest pilot situation going on. I might have missed that one. I don't think you missed it. I think it was. I think we we all agreed that it was a good idea for us to revisit, and we just didn't. Oh, okay. We didn't. We probably should have done it in the fall. Okay. Well, the reason I asked is I tutor a student at a New Hampshire high school, and yeah. she just matter of factly said, "Oh, we just do our blizzard bags, and you know, it's just a matter of course. It's like they've been doing it for quite a mm -hmm. while." I guess and it's just routine we talked about it at the state level with you know it seems to work fine in New Hampshire and then the feedback that we get from us 
I don't think it was any official study or anything, was maybe it's not as effective as you might hear. So, Do I, we have an yeah. issue with accessibility in these districts? Not everybody has internet at home. We, well, if you, so if there's no internet accessibility in a home, I believe through E-rate we can get um, students, we can get homes okay. connected. Uh, and then we also have, um, through the technology department, we have some portable hotspots that can be signed mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. So we do have really good That's opportunities. Good um, would I say that everybody can access? Probably not, but there's a possibility. Okay. Do you offer those hotspots and the E-rate um, to students as a matter of course if they don't have internet access at home? Yes. So mm -hmm. that that's not something that's going to crop up at a, on a snow day? No. no. No, that would be something that would be in place now anyways. Okay. That would be at the beginning of the year. A mm -hmm. letter needs to go out if you don't have access to contact yeah. us now. So when teachers yeah. find discover who doesn't right. seem to have access, yeah. then mm -hmm. there's usually conversation between them and a guidance person and technology to try to assist with that. That's great. That's wonderful. Yeah. Good stuff. And I have one other. Mm -hmm. other. Um, I was approached by several citizens in Lebanon very concerned about the September voting day yeah. on the... Uh, November? Oh, September. September. Yeah. September. Um, very concerned about that and feeling like it was disenfranchising and a waste of it's money. It's not though, Becky. It, I was no, I just, I just want a discussion um, yeah. on the record because they're going to be watching. Well, what, is the, what is the concern? <laughs> that the, uh, they feel that it disenfranchises voters and it's a waste of money to do two elections. And then it does disenfranchises it because it's not at the same time. No, as another. You, anybody can vote whenever they, if, the, if you want to go to the polls and vote, you can go to the polls and vote. You can get an absentee ballot. We're not disenfranchising anybody. And I was at that meeting with Mr. Connolly and we explained it to him if it's the same person that and I mean and I said you, you Lebanon, spoke to it as well. Lebanon has always been incredibly supportive of the school system mm -hmm. whenever we have a vote it's it's maybe if a thousand people vote maybe 300 vote against the the school budget it's always way yeah, it's not close it's, it's not, never yeah. anywhere near close and and we and we actually vote uh, for our school budget at the same time as the, the town in, in June. So I, you know, I, I I hear what he's saying, but don't say that we're disenfranchising anybody because anybody can go to the polls and vote whenever yeah. there's a vote. So we have so September fifteenth instead of. The, what's the election, November 3rd, 2nd, 3rd, I forget which, um, was selected because, first of all, June was too soon uh, to be prepared to do that once we had um, uh, contracted with the CHA. There wasn't enough time for a June vote. And uh, both legal counsel and the architect engineer firm said, you really want to make sure that something of this kind of significance stands on its own in a vote. This is the purpose people are voting. You don't want it to be a footnote on uh, a national election. Look, this is what happened in this, and this is all the coverage. Oh, by the way, the school thing? This is, we're talking $39.8 million. Um, that is a significant chunk of money. Uh, I think the person that was at the Lebanon meeting was concerned that we were trying to control a vote. Yeah. Anybody who wants to vote, I, you know, this any time. Um, I understand somebody might say it costs more money to have a separate vote. It does. I can absolutely understand that. It does cost more money to have a separate vote, but if we look at the topic that we're talking about and the amount of money. Uh, the district has received federal funding, excuse me, state funding for the school we're sitting in uh, for North Berwick Elementary and for the Hanson 
school. I mean, this, the, the, the three towns have, have done a really good job in uh, being available to make use of state funds. We're in a situation right now where because those schools hit within a similar range to each other, range of time, that, I mean, the high school's 20 years old. That's, that's an amazing, it was approved in 1997, began construction in 98. We're, we're in a, that's just crazy to people to think that, the, that Noble High School could be 20 years old, especially when they walk through it and say, this is a 20 year old school. Um, so we uh, do not carry a debt service besides, I think it's $13,604 left on this high school and it's paid off this year. After that, we have zero debt service. Well, when you don't reach a certain circuit breaker, you don't qualify to be on the state list. My look at it is the plan that we have in place now that will address the, the elementary schools uh, plus the, the school revolving renovation fund for asbestos abatement at the, at the middle school and some roofing. If those things come to pass, then within, I'm, I'm going to project. I would, if I was superintendent in eight years, I would be saying I'm going to be looking at getting the rest of uh, uh, the no uh, Noble Middle School on the state list for major reconstruction and funding at that project. I would take that, that, whole, that whole three level wing, I'd build, it, just as an example, I'd build a new wing on the other end, keep that central structure that has the really good bones to it with some renovations and some um, uh, revision of the, the pathways there around the school for um, transportation, but I think that the school system by doing this work will have equity of schools and it will also put the district in position so that in a, a few more years, Noble, High, uh, Noble Middle School would qualify for state funding. So um, we're, we're not shortcutting anybody who wants to vote. And we did talk about it at the last construction meeting, too. I asked that question. Okay. But I'm not on the construction What was that question? The, I asked, why are we doing this in September and not in November? And that, what yeah. you just said, the answer. Is yep. there, um, I mean, is there a way that we can communicate that message out? I think we just did. <laughs> Yeah, it, well, yeah, so it, this is one way, and there are other ways. We have an FAQ. Well, maybe a little more proactively for yeah, people we, watching. Yeah, we're putting together, <laughs> currently we're working on an FAQ to go out that would, uh, the frequently asked questions that we'll put on our construction um, connection in the web, on the school website that will be able to explain these kinds of things, and that's definitely one of the pieces that will be on it. Thank you for addressing yeah, I that. I think it's you an bet. important message it was, to get it was well several, out of that. several people, not just one. Sure. And they had quite a. And I get somebody discussion. saying, let me see, why would they be doing that? There's nothing clandestine. No. It's just to say, this is a huge topic. It can't be a footnote. I just want the projects to move forward mm. because yes. Lebanon is in desperate need of a yes. new building. Yeah. And I just want the. I w I'd love it to happen tomorrow. If we could vote next week, I would be able yeah. to vote next week. If the projects didn't pass, another Lebanon, another replacement Lebanon oh school has got to go right back out. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not going to be, okay, well, well, you know, three or four years down the road, let's, that is not a school we want to be putting district money into. Mm -mm. Okay, thank you. Certainly. Right. Anyone else with comments? Nope. All right. Any public input at the second round? All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? I'm not oh, oh, you do. Oh, oh, you do. Sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. The other night. Um. So the other night for the select meeting, I actually gave a report. Um, BCTV is compiling our information to determine if we're actually doing what our viewers would like to see. And I thought you might like to know where the school board and where some of the things stood as far as viewers are concerned. So we have a YouTube channel. And on our YouTube channel, it was really interesting. The top 10 videos, number three was your good man Charlie Brown out of the Knowlton School. 
Um, number five was a school board meeting on 12-19-19. Uh, and number nine was Isle in the Moon, the play at the high school. Those were out of the top ten videos that we had. Now we have playlists, so I categorize our videos according to where they belong. And I thought you'd be interested to know that you made the top five. Yeah. Number five was school board meetings. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and school board events was number 10. So they, they were in there, but they were kind of down a little bit. Um, in the on-demand site, you didn't make any of the top ones. Those were all our live streams, were number one and number two were channel 22 and channel 95. So we have a lot of people who do actually tune in to our live streams. Um, and then Great Balls listening sessions and some of the things that we have done in town, updates from town manager, those type of things were actually our top videos. Um, we also, I wanted to let you know, are seen in a lot of different countries. So we have people who tune in to us from the United Kingdom, Canada, France, Philippines, Bermuda, um, India, Malaysia. Um, now, it's only one or two hits, three, five, whatever, but you are seen around the world. For I, for one, do not blame them. <laughs> <laughs> um, they don't want to come to Maine for a school board meeting? <laughs> no, I'm afraid fun, not. Huh? Um, and our most popular way of getting out to people has been our Facebook page. So basically what happens is I'm posting those videos on our Facebook and they're linking to them from there. So that was the most popular way. And then the second way is through the web page. But I thought they were kind of interesting little statistics <laughs> that you might like to know. Terry, can you share Thank some you. of those like more detailed link to me so I can put them in here? Sure. You're going to get all this? Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, I'll share with you if you share with me the little PowerPoint you're going to get. Well, then for a month of half yes. You betcha. All right. We're Thank you. Thanks, Terry. To our international audience, do I have a <laughs> motion to adjourn? <laughs> Seconded? All in favor? Who is the first? Me, it's Becky well, and Nancy. Yeah.